The fact that it's killing bacteria, it's dilating your blood vessels, it obviously doesn't put on any extra weight, it's not high in sugar or any of these other properties that different drinks have. If you are a whiskey drinker or you feel guilty about it, these are some of the things that it can help with when done moderately, which I'm going to moderately drink this right now. <laughs> All right, welcome back to another episode of Craft Whiskey University. Guys, I'm gonna to talk today about the health benefits of whiskey. Here's the thing, we all like a drink that's watching this, I assume, because you're on this channel, uh, but also, we don't wanna feel guilty about it. Whiskey has some really good properties from a health perspective that's good to cover. Obviously, it's in moderation. You don't wanna be drinking to excess. Excess is always gonna be in anything. Excessive salt, excessive sugars, excessive anything is bad. But in moderation, there's things that are actually good, and whiskey is one of those things. I'm gonna to touch on that now. All right, so number one is, of course, uh, one of the health benefits of, of helping fight the common cold. I don't think whiskey cures the common cold or fixes or kills the common cold. But one thing, uh, Dr. William Schaffner from uh, Vanderbilt University, uh, he's kind of the, the chair of the medical um, preventative medicine. What he said was that what whiskey can do uh, is it can actually dilate the blood vessels. And what that does, it helps the body fight infection. So whiskey has some properties, specifically if you put it into a hot toddy or a hot whiskey, uh, there's a few other benefits with the vitamin C from the lemons and, and obviously the antioxidant properties of the honey and the antibacterial properties. But it is uh, one of those that it's really good at from, from a pain perspective on a common cold, it helps from a blood dilation of the blood vessels and, and helping cure and carry infection properly throughout the body, it helps a lot. So that's number one. All right, so number two is a really, really big one, and that's ellagic acid. If you don't know what that is, it's found in red wine. Red wine gets a lot of, uh, I guess, a lot of press in the media about how much of a health benefit it is, you know, longevity in life. Ellagic acid is actually far more profound in a whiskey than it is in a red wine. And what that does is it's, it's basically a micronutrient and, and effectively it helps the body. It's like a, an antioxidant. It helps the body rid itself of toxins. So it helps the body heal. All right, so on to number three, and that's this one here, which is about killing bacteria. So it, there was a, a research done, uh, Italian researchers, that uh, on the Annals of Microbiology, this is where they published it, they basically went and got bar ice, and they studied the amount of bacteria that's found in bar ice. If you go into any bar, order a cocktail, order a drink, they put ice in it, there's over 52 different strains and 30 plus different species of bacteria that are living in there that can obviously get us sick. And what they did is they took the four most common and then they tested them against different alcohols and drinks. So uh, peach tea, they tested it against vodka, they tested it against whiskey, they tested it against Coca-Cola, for example. And in all four cases, the only drink out of all of these that killed all of those four strains was actually the whiskey. So while people say, oh, well, vodka has alcohol in it, so does whiskey, that should do it. That's actually not true because while alcohol does kill, whiskey and alcohol are both at around 40% to 50% ABV. You tend to need to get up into the 70s for alcohol to kill, like alcohol and hand sanitizer, for example. So what whiskey does have that vodka and other spirits don't is it's actually very low on the pH scale. It's got a lot of acidity. So the combination of acidity mixed with the alcohol makes it the number one drink of all for actually killing bacteria and it wiped out all of those strains of bacteria found in ice. So again, if you're looking to kill bacteria, whiskey's your man. All right, so on the number four real quick, this one is low carb and weight loss. Well, you know, it goes without saying, Whiskey is quite a palatable drink, especially a good age, mature whiskey. A couple of drops of water opens it right up. And it's much more flavorsome than any, you know, to me, to any gin and tonic, to any neat vodka or anything of that nature. It is the most flavorsome because of how it's made and the aging in the barrel. So it's much more complex, so it's enjoyable. But the beauty of it is it's low in carb, and it's very, very good if you're looking to lose weight. And there is health benefits, of course, to weight loss. As we all know, if you've got weight on and you still want to drink, drinking sugary, carby type drinks with you know mixers and all that stuff is just going to continually put on the weight. If you're drinking whiskey neat, you're going to lose weight. Well, at least you should anyway. I'm not a doctor, but uh, and none of this is what I'm saying today, by the way, is me as a doctor or giving any type of medical advice. It's just me telling you some of the research that I've done and giving you some tips and, and pointers on, on benefits of whiskey but you will lose weight. <laughs> now on to number five, which is reduced stress, pain, and anxiety. Now, when I'm talking about any of these here, I'm talking about drinking it in moderation, not in heavy doses to try and get hammered and smash a bottle of whiskey. That's not the purpose of any of this. So in regards to reducing stress, whiskey or any alcohol for that matter has been proven to obviously help at the end of a stressful day or if you're feeling very anxious, whiskey absolutely does lower that. And I want to tell you a story. Uh, not so long ago, I was getting this tattoo done. Um, 
and when it was, I, I got this done just after my father passed. My father passed away, so it's actually a, a tattoo. It's an eagle and a sun with a banner on it, and that's what he had on his arm. He got it in the army. His was a really old school one. So I got a kind of a more modern version of it, and that was the day that he, uh, he, he was born and the day that he passed back in October. And, uh, and when I was getting this, it was I think it was like an eight-hour session or something like that and I had to have my top off for, for her to be able to get to where she needed to be a tattoo artist. And it was quite cold, it got done in Ireland and it was just the doors were open, people were coming in all the time to the tattoo parlor, so it got really cold. And after eight hours, if anyone's had a long session on a tattoo, you can tend to get into a situation where you get uncontrollable shakes. And that started happening to me because it was just cold, I couldn't warm myself down. The, obviously the long amount of kind of, uh, not really that painful, but you know what I'm saying, when you get a long session on a tattoo. So I luckily had, some whiskey with me. I had higher proof new make whiskey with me that I took off the stills actually at Dublin Liberty, uh, Dublin Liberty Distillery. They gave me some of their new make to try from Daryl McNally and I tried it. And I, I basically in between the session, I couldn't go any longer. So I just took a few whacks of, uh, of whiskey and literally within about six or seven minutes, I went from like uncontrollably shaking to wanting to finish this. I wasn't in pain or anything. I just couldn't stop my body from shaking to just boom, perfect, sat down, finished the rest of the tattoo and it wasn't a problem. So whiskey does do a lot of that. And that's why they used to use it in the battlefields back in the day when soldiers were, were cold, when soldiers were tired, when they were injured, they use it as an antiseptic. They also use it to be able to calm the body. So it does relieve stress, it relieves pain, of course. It's not as good as other painkillers that are out there, but it absolutely helps with that. And it helps with anxiety. So I'm not prescribing this, but it does, these are some of the benefits of whiskey. All right, so on to number six, the last one, which is longer life. Does whiskey prolong your life? Well, here's the thing. Uh, there, there was research done by the, uh, by the Research Society of Alcoholism. And what they did is they researched, obviously, heavy drinkers, moderate drinkers, and non-drinkers. And believe it or not, this might sound crazy, this was a study and this is the research that came out. Moderate drinkers that drank whiskey had a longer lifespan than heavy drinkers or non-drinkers. Non-drinkers, obviously, I guess maybe they have more stress in their life because they don't have the whiskey to uh, alleviate it. Heavy drinkers are obviously overdoing it and damaging their organs, but moderate drinkers. So there's a, lad, a lady by the name of Grace Jones, amazing Grace they call her, and she drank whiskey every single night all through adulthood and she lasted till 112 and she attributes it to the whiskey, not to say that that's the case. My Nana used to drink either a glass of Guinness or a nip of whiskey pretty much every night of her life too and she lived into her 90s. So there is research behind it when you do it moderately. Because of all these benefits that we talked about, the allergic acid that's going into your system, right? The, uh, the fact that it's killing bacteria, you know, what it's, it's dilating your blood vessels. Uh, all of these things, it obviously doesn't put on any extra weight. It's not high in sugar or any of these other properties that different drinks have. All of these combined, if you drink it moderately, it can obviously help. I'm not proponent that you saying that you must do that or you should do that. I'm just saying if you are a whiskey drinker or you feel guilty about it, these are some of the things that it can help with when done moderately, which I'm going to moderately drink this right now. Cheers. Subscribe if you like. We'll definitely do more whiskey universities and uh, give us some comments. Tell me what you think. I'm not a doctor, but I have done the research on it, but definitely put it in there. We're, we're glad to debate some of it back and forward and, and put in our research articles and, and papers that we read on this information. And yeah, just give us some comments. If you like it, share it with someone else. If our following keeps growing, then obviously we're going to want to keep producing content. So share it and, and bring some more people in to see what they think.